श्री आयुर्वेदा श्री श्री आदि फंडेड बाई इज होलीनेस श्री श्री रविशंकर जी फाउंडर ऑफ आर्ट ऑफ लिविंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टू ब्रिंग होलिस्टिक हेल्थ टू एंटायर वर्ल्ड यू वॉन्ट टू सी ईच एंड एवरी पर्सन हेल्थी एंड हैप्पी अक्रॉस द ग्लोब Everybody want to be healthy, right? Yes. yes. And we keep doing something, something, ah? Huh? So normally, what do you do to keep yourself healthy? What do you do? Exercise. Exercise. What else? Healthy Good food. Good sleep. Healthy food. Healthy food. Keep stress down. Keep stress down. What else? What do you do to keep yourself fit? Exercise. Positive. Exercise. Think positive. Think positive. Very good answer. What more? How many do you go to gym? How many go for swimming, running, jogging, all that? You know? Yes, sports. Yeah. I mean, these all answer are very good, but no one is complete. Then what is complete answer? You know, today, today if we fall sick, we have so-called five-star hospitals. But if you want to buy health. Do you have any answer? Or you can get a complete health? No. That what is Ayurveda? In Sanskrit it says, "Prayojanam chasse swasthasse swasthe rakshanam aturasya vikar prashamanam cha." First aim, first goal of Ayurveda, how to maintain health of a healthy individual. If you are healthy, how to maintain you? That is the main task. And Aturasi Vikara Prasamanaja. Very secondary was the treatment part. You know, the ancient time people are very in good condition, good physique, healthy also. Even they don't feel the small, small problems. They will go to Ayurvedic Vaidya and they will ask, please check my pulse and see if I have any problem. So doctor will tell them, you have such and such problems. Oh yes, oh yes. So before disease manifests, We can diagnose and correct it. That's why the knowledge is called Ayurveda. Ay means time is span we spend in this world since birth till death, and Veda is wisdom, knowledge about life. So in Sanskrit it says, "Hita hitam sukham dukham mayus tasse hita hitam manam cha tatre tatam Ayurveda saucate." The science. Which teaches you what is good for you and what is not, what makes you miserable and what makes you happy, and leave choice in your hand. So four aspect of life always touches us: good, bad, happy, unhappy, or miserable. No, and we don't know that moment what to do. To keep yourself good shape, you eat good food, good sleep, do some exercise. But what do you do to keep your mind happy? What do you do normally? When you are upset, sad, low feelings, what do you do normally? Meditate. Meditate, very good answer. What else? Sports. Is when you are sad, you do sports that time? To divert mind, go play something. Okay, go play something is good. Okay. Eat comfort food. Eat comfort food. That exactly. Let's just, let's, let's How many of you go for chocolates or French fries <laughs> <laughs> or coffee or tea? Or, uh, many people they like smoking, drinks. That's what they do. Go to sensual pleasure just to make you happy, and then you feel happy afterwards, right? And most of time. Our liking is our addiction, most of time, not all the time. It's very nicely decoratively written. A smog kills. Still, people smoke. Alcohol dangerous to health. Still, people drink. Why? Just to satisfy their mind. They know it is not good. They still they do. So, what is that faculty which give you real joy? Not the illusion, or not the illusion. So that's what we need to understand: body and mind complex. That's why I will the talk about the body and mind. Both need to be in a harmonious state. 
many times we have noticed we want to do something but body is so tired. And sometimes you want to rest but there is so much restless energy in the body. So how to harmonize them? That's why the yoga and Ayurveda comes in action. So understand that we need to know our basic constitution. You know, according to Ayurveda, body is made of five basic elements. It's called Pancha Mahabhuta. It's space, air, fire, water and earth element. But every individual is born with slight proportions differently. That determine our unique body constitution. So Ayurveda described total seven body types. So those who are born more amount of space and air, they are named as Vata Prakriti, V-A-T-A, -A, Vata. So Vata constitution person will be very thin, more talkative, they talk a lot, always restless, they can't sit at one place for a long time. They keep moving all the time, busy with work, busy without work. They look like doing so much, but they don't do, but keep moving. <laughs> and low body weight, 35 to 45 kilos, below 100 pounds. You know, whole life they spend so much money to buy some supplement to gain some weight, but nothing works. So second constitution, those who are born more with fire element. They are named as Pitta constitution. So Vata is thin built, but Pitta is moderate built. Good looking, leadership quality, sharp feature, perfectionist, dynamic, intelligent. They think they are intelligent. <laughs> of course they are intelligent. And short temperament also. A small things can bother them. Oh, why is it like this? This should be like this. A small things. So that's why our behavioral attitude is also based on our constitution. When both spouses pitta, is good entertainment for others. <laughs> <laughs> and in this is banti nahi basti hai. <laughs> Third constitution, those are born more with water and earth element. They are named as kapha. So kapha person is thick built, cool, calm, lazy, happy, fatty and overweight. They never complete the task in proper time. I always say that Kapha is the best constitution, least bothered person on planet. So three constitution are mix of these two, Vata, Pitta, Pitta, Kapha, Kapha, Vata. They have mixed characteristics and one is called Samya, all five in equal proportion. So like I can give you one example, like uh, if some fire is there, so Vata person will just run. Pitta will think, let me carry two bucket of water. And Kapha will nicely and relaxingly say, Santanu, just call the fire brigade. <laughs> so that's why we respond to the situations, our behavioral attitude. So constitution is nature's gift, God gift, that I can't change, you can't change. But you can live the best of your constitution that is possible. Because these five elements represent as three biodynamic forces in our body. So whole system is based on three forces like a tripod, also named as Vata, Pitta, Kapha. So if you understand this, you know the 50% Ayurveda. <laughs> so Vata force is responsible for any kind of movements in body, blood circulation, energy circulation, hormonal circulation, all the joint moments, neuromuscular coordination, even thinking, thought and emotions. Pitta force is responsible for digestion, metabolism, skin complexion, eyesight, visual perception, intellect and hairs, blood formation, all that is Pitta. And Kapha is responsible for a structural balance to keep our body in a proper shape. Nutrition part, lubrication of joints, they please come. And memory also. What happens when Vata is out of balance? We feel a lot of gas in the lower abdomen. And Vata affect joints first, knee, back, neck, all joint pain, 
arthritis, spondylitis, hypertension, cramps, dryness of skin, cracking of joints, more thoughts, less sleep. When vata is high, you get a lot of thoughts. Sleep becomes less. Other way around also, if you sleep less, vata goes high. So if you know only what aggravates vata, then you can avoid these things, right? But if you don't know, then how? First, try to say, my vata is out of balance. If any pain, cramps, muscular tenderness, stiffness is there, definitely your vata is out of balance. And what aggravates vata? Too much talking. How many of you notice when you talk a lot, you feel restless? Too much traveling also. Less sleep. Think if you don't sleep for one night, what happens next? Your mind is restless. Then cold climate, cold breeze, cold food, too much raw food, too much dry food like crackers, chips, and big size beans like kidney bean, gram, and peas. Check you know, rajma, chana, butter. They make a lot of gases. And food with cooling potency. Food has six tastes, sweet, sour and salt, health to balance vata and pungent, bitter and astringent aggravates vata. Then stay warm, stay calm, relaxation, meditation and the best thing is the body massage. If you massage body with the oil and go to sauna, that is the best way to balance vata. Second is Pitta. So Pitta control digestion, metabolism, skin complexion, eyesight, intellect, hair. But when Pitta get out of balance, what happens? We feel more heat in the middle part of the tummy. Indigestion, hyperacidity and Pitta affect head first. Vata affects legs first and Pitta affect head first. Headache, migraine, early grey hair, hair fall, skin rashes, respiratory allergies, problems in eyes and conflict in mind. Two thoughts, two decisions at one time. Should I do this now or then? Today or tomorrow? Fighting with own mind. So what aggravates Pitta? Food with heating potency. Like chili, you know. So chili, junk food, fried food, fermented food, sour food, anger, worry and fasting. So those are Pitta constitution. If they don't have lunch in proper time, they definitely get out of balance. They definitely get headache. How many of you notice you don't, you don't have lunch? Headache comes. There's a bit time balance. So food with heating potency like chili and food with sour taste. Except lemon. Lemon is okay. Other, any other sour uh, aggravates pitta. And pungent taste like chili. And like garam masala. Food with heating potency aggravates pitta. And what helps to balance pitta? Food with cooling potency. Sweet, bitter and astringent taste balances pitta. And keep a proper routine. So when you work under pressure or when there is a timeline, something happens in the tummy, right? Mm -hmm. That also aggravates pitta. That's why pitta like to be boss. They don't like boss on their head. They want to be independent. <laughs> So third force, kapha, keep body in a proper shape. The chest and the stomach part is the seat of kapha. So when kapha is balanced, food get digested, you know, it get lubricated very well and then it goes to each and every part of body. But when kapha get out of balance, then we feel lot of mucus in the stomach, in the chest region. And then we feel nausea, anorexia, kapha and cold, lot of phlegm also. Person becomes dull, lethargy, low energy, inertia, and body start putting on weight even without eating also. Many metabolic problems comes because of all this imbalance. You know, disease cannot come in one day. It takes time. So Ayurveda says two kind of diseases there. One is called Nija, one is called Agantuja. Most problems are which called the NCD, non-communicable disease. They come because of imbalance of Vata Pitta Kapha. But infection comes first and then influence Vata Pitta Kapha. So food is major factor for
for wellness and sickness too. So before you put anything in your mouth, you really need to know, is it friendly to my constitution or not? So I would say only with vata imbalance, it can be 80 types of disease. With pitta, it can be 40. With kapha, it can be 20. And combination can be more than 1,000. Then how to balance? <laughs> So Ayurveda say, if you want to stay fit and healthy, just follow three things. You want to know? Yeah. <laughs> of course, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's called Ahara Vihara Rasayana. Ahara means food. Food according to your individual constitution. No, hey, it's good for my constitution, so take it more. It's not good, but you like to take little bits. If you take something wrong, you're not going to fall sick in one day. Why? Our immunity is taking care, right? But when every time we eat wrong food, one day immunity give up. So Ayurveda says it's called the Sat Kriya Kala. There are six stages before a disease manifests. Like in the summer time, the whole earth is heating. So we use the fan, right? That is called the accumulation of Vata, Sanchaya. Then Prakopa, then rainy season, Vata proliferate. Then prasara, then it is spread all over, all over the body in the early autumn and in the autumn season it accumulates in the joints. It can be your joints or muscles or any organ. And then in winter time it manifests as a disease. That's why suddenly when winter comes, because of cooling nature, vata aggravates so everybody feels cold but very few will get joint pain and out of few, very few will get arthritis. So before they get arthritis, you can balance it. That is the beauty called pulse assessment. So through pulse we can weigh what imbalance is going on in the system and how is the impact is affecting the knee or back or neck. So before it turns into disease, we can balance it. Normally you go to doctor, you tell your problems, right? I have this, this, this problem. And sometimes end with the no diagnosis problem is still there. But in Ayurveda, but they will check the pulse and tell you what problems you have. So, first thing, food according to constitution. <clears throat> then discipline for daily life from morning to evening, how we have to be, behave with ourselves. I will say sleep early, wake up early, take proper food in proper time. All these guidelines are there. So, slight change according to each constitution. And then called using the Rasayana using certain supplements to keep body young, vital and dynamic. You know, in the ancient time, Rishi, Saint were living the 100 year, even more than 100 year life. You know, human body is designed for 100 to 120 years. Like the each animal, some are 10, 12, 30 years, right? Animals are living their life, but not the human being. Our health data may say something, something, but if you see anybody out of 100 is living 100 years, no. Out of 1000, no. Out of 10,000, also no. Out of one leg, no. Maybe one out of million is reaching 100. That is our actual health data today. Why? Eating wrong food improper lifestyle, a stress. Because our body, Vata, Pitta, Kapha can be influenced by food. That is called the age factor. The childhood, they have more Kapha related problems. <coughs> they have Kapha code is very common. Young age, headache, migraine, pimples is very common. Early gray hair fall is very common. Old age, Everybody get joint issues, more or less. Doesn't matter what constitution they are. It's called Te Vayo Aho Ratri Bhuktanam Antamadhyaya Dikakrama. Morning is Kapha time, noon is Pitta, evening is Vata. That's why noon time we feel hungry. So if those are Pitta constitution, if they don't have lunch in proper time, they definitely get headache. Evening time we feel little restless, so Vata goes high. Same the early night is Kapha. If we sleep before 10, 10, 30, we have a very good deep sound sleep. But if you don't sleep up to 10, 10, 30, so those are Pitta constitutes, especially they get totally active in the middle of the night. And then they can't sleep. Then they eat something and then they are able to sleep. 
which is not available. The different seasons also have the impact on the Vata Pitta Kapha. Then infections, and infections can influence our system. Then radiations, emotions. You know, any good news or bad news can give a heart attack to anybody, right? If a person gets a news, oh, I got a million dollar lottery. <laughs> so the, what is sound is vibration. So vibration also influences our system. So we keep catching different kind of vibrations from our surroundings, our friend and family member, and we keep thinking of this thing. Oh, my mother has cancer. I have. I may have. I may have one day. They also get that because they are constantly culturing that. That is called mental pollution. So both need to be in a healthy state, body and mind. That's why discipline for daily life is necessary. It's called the Dhinacharya. And then using certain supplements to keep body young, vital and dynamic. There are so many supplements like Trifala, Ashwagandha, Chonpra, Satavari, Brahmi. They keep body young, vital and dynamic. So Ayurveda says, Pittam Pangu Kafam Pangu Pangavu Maladhatava Vayuna Yatranente Tatra Gachat Negava Pitta and Kapha are like a handicap. They cannot move from one place to another place without help of Vata. So Vata is the major factor again to imbalance Pitta and Kapha. If we learn to balance Vata, we can be in a good shape. So like imbalance Vata. Balance Vata help our circulation. And imbalance Vata gives pain, cramps, restlessness, hypertension, insomnia and aging. That's when the old is, Vata imbalance is very common. Think other way around. Everybody want to be young, right? That is the secret behind. Imbalance Vata can make you old, so young, balance Vata can make, make you young. young. How? Everyday body massage. That's why Ayurveda talks, Nitya Bhyanga. Daily body massage. So before shower, quickly applying the oil for whole body. Balance vata. You will see the result in two, three days. You just feel like wow. So those are vata and kapha constitution. They can use sesame oil. But those who are pitta, they can use sunflower, olive, or coconut oil. Depend on the climatic condition. When it's too hot, then coconut is good. Moderate hot sunflower, little bit cold, then olive is good. Like nowadays, for pitta, olive is good. That's how we balance the Vata Pitta Kapha with food, lifestyle and certain supplements. And time to time to check the pulse, what imbalance there before it turns into any disease, we can correct it. So that way once in two, three months is good to have a pulse assessment. For that we need to be at least two, three hours empty stomach. And I am there for next two, three days, so some people already know. So now we talk a little bit about mind. Everybody has one mind, right? Body you can see, you can touch, you can give the massage to body, you can give the shot also, right? But what about mind? Have you seen your mind? Anybody has seen their mind? I have not seen yet. Have you seen your mind? Where is it? But we do have one, right? That for sure we know. And it gets botherations, it gets happiness, it gets sadness, it gets angry agitated. So many things comes, right? Morning till evening, it changes many times. Then how to handle? So is, is it to balance body, vata, pitta, kapha? But how to balance mind? I tell you, mind is more easy to balance. To have a healthy human mind, there are three qualities in Ayurveda called uh, three guna. Three qualities which are necessary for our healthy mind. It's called Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. Happy state, hyper state and heavy or dull state. When you are happy and joyful, you feel good, right? That is the Sattva. When you are happy without reason, you just feel wow from inside. 
There is no reason but it is feeling good and light. That is called sattva, which comes through meditation, breathing technique, deep relaxation and fresh food, which just give you more energy and less toxin. Then another state of mind is called hyper state, rajas. Enjoying our five senses. Tasty food can make you happy, right? French fries, pizza, burger, tikka. <laughs> See, now the big smile is there. <laughs> it makes you happy because of taste. Enjoying any senses. Also necessary for healthy mind. Nice music can make you happy, right? Then nice sightseeing or nice movie, whatever you watch. Then nice fragrance. Tasty food, of course. And then nice touch. When you get a nice hug from your beloved one, it makes you happy. Yes or no? And then third quality called tamas. Tamas means darkness. Then you forget your whole world, your friends, family members, spouse, bank balance, everything and go to sleep. Total darkness for six, eight, nine hours. That is also necessary for a healthy mind. Think if you don't sleep for one night, what happens? Next your mind is restless. To keep mind in balance state, proper sleep, proper attachment with the senses, and then joyful state, meditation, light, food is necessary. So sattva is always good. Happiness without reason. Rajas is happy with reason. You need some reason to be happy. It can be music or light food or tasty food or meet your friends, anything. And tamas, it only promises you joy in future. It never deliver, but say, oh, if I have this one, I'll be happy. If I have this one, I'll be happy. So that's why sattva is always good, it is always quality, but there is only two impurities which impure our mind, it's called rajas and tamas. Too much attachment with senses will also imbalance your mind, too less attachment will also imbalance your mind. Too much dullness in your mind will also imbalance and too less uh, also imbalance. If you don't sleep for many days, you will be out of balance. So how to reach mind? See, in Ayurveda, yogi can do that. The breathing is the one answer. With the breathing, you can change your pattern and change your mind. Deep meditation, relaxation. And changing the company also. If you are in a good, wise company, you feel uplifted. But in Ayurveda, we can control it through food. If you take a fresh, squeezed apple juice, how you feel afterwards? Do you feel tired afterwards? How you feel? Good. Energetic. Or take fresh salad, how you feel? Good. Why? Prana. prana. Yeah, it gives you life energy and prana. That's called the life energy. Sugar. So fresh food give you? Sugar. Sugar. Sugar is comes under rajas. It gives you for that moment you feel happy because of the sweet taste. But not for everybody. So fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, freshly cooked warm meal give you instant energy and less toxins. So you just feel light and good after some time. So when your mind is upset, just have fresh juice or go a couple of days on the fruits diet, you'll feel good definitely. Then comes Rajas food. All the baked food, fried food, fermented food, all the pizza, burger, french fries, pickle, and you know, too much salty food, too much spicy food. It tastes good because of taste you feel happy. Not there is much energy. It tastes good. And you feel happy because of the taste. So that is called rajasic food. So little bit rajas is necessary in our life to keep you moving. Otherwise, you will be meditating all the time. So rasic food is also necessary little bit. Then comes tamasic food. Food which brings the dullness in mind. 
like all the non veg food dead body food with low prana and no prana food cooked more than 6 hours the prana goes down food with negative prana like onion and mushroom there is no life energy inside it takes our life energy to make it digestible so when people eat such dead body what happens it takes our life energy so we feel drowsy and sleepy so many people they sleep on the dining table only <laughs> and when such food get digested it gives a bolt of energy muscular energy so those who are fighting in the battlefield or doing lot of physical workout they can digest such energy if you are not doing in a physical sitting in front of computer eating all the time non veg food what happens it attacks mind in a negative way aggression <coughs> violence and hatred comes and then depression comes i was almost 39 in europe more than 50% people are depressed there and they don't know what is the reason they call it burnout they put physical but suddenly burnout one day they leave the job and go to psychiatry they are more psychiatry than hospital what is the reason every sandwich they have the flesh so too much tamasic food is not good for mind it good for body but not for mind so ayurveda talks eat with awareness more sattvic food little bit rasic food and rarely tamasic food so the day you have some non veg food okay fine go ahead do two hours workout and at least take two big bowl of salad and some fruits so the balance is there so ayurveda is to balance enjoy your life with awareness too much rasic food will make you hyper any senses can dominate and imbalance your mind you know whatever mostly in the weekend when you go out and eat so called tasty food eat all the junk food rasic food after that mind becomes flavored and we go for shopping and buy so many unwanted things it looks so nice and decorated but when you come back home there is no charm left so it, your eyes becomes flavored even any man will look a handsome man any beautiful girl will look a beautiful girl next to him is the same person no charm there <laughs> <laughs> so too much attachment with the senses will also make you sick and too less also make you sick so balance is needed that can be corrected with the food think nice music can make you calm and relax but loud loud music can make you headache nice fragrance can make you relax feel good and those who are working in the perfume factory they get headaches any with the food if you taste one bite is good if you take the two bites good if how many rasgullas you can have after 2 3 4 you don't get the same taste the taste goes down yes. correct yes. there is a limit for the sensory pleasure if you don't meet for your uh, for so many days to your beloved one you feel so sad and if you hold for 24 hour no fun <laughs> so proper attachment is needed that keeps you balance and then same with the sleep also proper sleep too much also will make imbalance your mind and too less also imbalance but if you have too much tamasic food then it bring the darkness <coughs> in the mind dull and old a person will dull and lazy and then negative call it aggression comes then violence comes and then hatred comes we start hating the person whom we love the most in our life man think oh i am miserable of this lady and lady think i am miserable of this man they divorce each other and then they get more depressed and they fall in depression it is actually the food which influences the mind so that's why today so many separation are happening so they don't know what is the reason how to handle the mind so that's why watch your food what you eat so there's a little bit attention to all five elements first is a space element second is air then fire then water and earth so when we meditate we are in a space element so meditation has the power to balance all five element anything can be healed with meditation from common cold to cancer 
anything means anything. Even the planetary effect, any infections, radiations, emotions. Then comes air element, breathing. Breathing can help on the next four levels. So any breathing you do, aerobics, jogging, running, pranayama, it increases oxygen level in the system. And best is Sudarshan Kriya. How many of you have done the Art of Living Happiness program? So very few are new also there. No? Yeah. It is a very powerful technique which you learn in Art of Living course. There is research from Allen Institute of Medical Science that within 20 minutes after this technique, the stress hormone, cortisol and lactate comes normal without medicine. India's biggest mental health institute in Bangalore gave their report 70% cure in depression without medicine. In 45 days, cholesterol comes normal. Look at it. It's right there. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. All the facts are there. Very nice. Then comes water element. So, human body is 60 to 70% water. So, if you drink enough water, all toxins flush out. Have you seen running water? It looks fresh, right? And stagnant is? not fresh. The same if you are flowing, you are fresh. So too much water will wash down your minerals and too less will keep you dry. So if we divide 6 o'clock morning till 10 in the night, that is the active hours, rest 8 hours is for your sleep. So 6 to morning to 10 in the night is 16 hour time gap. If we divide by 2, it becomes 8 intervals. So every 2 hour, if you take at least 1, 1 and a half cup or maximum two cups of water, tea, juice, soup, any liquid. It exactly becomes eight to 12 cups, two to three liter, and then you're flowing. But don't drink too much water immediately before food and immediately after food. Otherwise, it dilute the digestive fire and make toxins in the body. And sign off in Ayurveda call it ama. And sign of ama is that when you wake up in the morning, body is tired and heavy. There is a feeling to sleep five minutes more, dull ache all over the body. How many of you noticed that? Yeah, that's how. So how to get rid of ama? That's the important point again. One cup really hot water like a tea. Sit before going to bed. In two, three days you'll feel light. And you lose few pound extra weight also. You know, another thing is that those who are having a little bit heavy weight and ama is there, doesn't matter what they do, weight will not go down. Inch loss will be there, but not the weight loss. And five days go on a khichdi grill called the khichdi diet and the equal amount of mung dal and rice. That also helps to reduce ama. Then comes earth element. Food according to constitution. So five elements are there. First is space element. What is answer? Meditation. Five is meditation. If you do in the morning, you are energetic for all day, but when you come back, you are tired. So if you meditate in the evening, you are energetic in the evening also. So twice is best. Then, air element, what is the answer? Breathing, Breathing technique. Best is Sudarshan Kriya. Then, third is fire element. What is the answer? Once a week, light food. You know, all the time our liver is easy to digest food. If you give one day rest, go on fruits, vegetables, juice and soup diet. Not complete fasting, but just light food. Then, your liver can make more immunoglobins. Then water element, what is answer? Drink. 2 to 3 liters, 8 to 12 cups, all total liquid. And last is earth element. So all four elements now is in your hand, fifth is in my hand. <laughs> Once you need to visit an Ayurvedic Baita to know what constitution you are, what imbalance in your system is there, and follow the food and guideline for lifetime. That's why once you come to know here and pitta or vata or kapha, then you follow the food and cow line. How is your mind now? Good. Good? A long day, a little bit tired also, right? How many are feeling any pain, discomfort in the body? Any discomfort? Okay. So we have a few minutes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Five minutes is there, no? So we'll do a short breathing technique called Bastrika. Okay? So during Basrika, when you breathe in, hands goes up. And when you breathe out, we all can do yeah. in, yeah, make your hands up and breathe out. Breathe in 
and out. You can also do, you don't need to record, you can do this one. Within and out. In 